Hi, welcome to the Market Alert for Monday, the 10th of June 2024. So, payrolls, malarkey, and pussy meltdown prompts market mayhem. We've got uh, May payroll soar 272k above highest estimate as wages come in red hot. And uh, inside the most ridiculous jobs report in years, well worth a read. It's all crashing down for Bidenomics. And hot uh, NFP sees traders pair Fed rate uh, cut bets ahead. So obviously with those sorts of numbers, any chance of a rate cut is uh, certainly off the table at the moment. That said, uh, this week is a big one, if I uh, am not mistaken. So let's just have a look. There's nothing today, as you can see there. But then we get into Wednesday, we've got uh, US CPI and also uh, FOMC. Uh, so we've got the federal funds rate as well, which is showing no cut in rates and uh, CPI as well, which is forecast to come out uh, the same for the year on year number there. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, but it's a big week for the market. So today it'll obviously settle down from uh, Friday's uh, surprise in quotes and release of the uh, NFP numbers. So we'll just have to wait and see there. Right, let's have a look at the market's reaction to this, particularly the metals when we get to them. But uh, certainly it was an interesting announcement. So let's kick off with the Dow and work our way through. So in the Dow, market trading up to uh, the recent high there. You can see with the pink lines there as resistance, market stopped there and made its way back. Given the number in a situation where the rates weren't so high, this would have seen the market put on at least 700 points to the upside, but uh, it was constrained by the fact that uh, it was a, a surprise number and uh, prices uh, reacted uh, in a strange way, to say the least. Uh, as you can see there, uh, first of all, it sold off, then they brought the market up, and then we ended up back uh, 50%. Uh, including uh, the overnight there to where the market actually uh, started. I mean, we're actually not down that much at all when you uh, look at it this way. If you just draw a line across there, we're only down about 60, 70 points from where the market was before the announcement. So it's absorbed this uh, well, looking at the numbers there. And in the daily chart, it's just a matter of uh, trying to get through the 50, the 20, and then this uh, resistance that we have here. You want a number? Let's have a look at this one across here. And that's at uh, 39,147. But the market uh, obviously is going to be treading water after today, waiting for those CPI and uh, also the FOMC meeting minutes to see whether the rates are going to be cut or not. And uh, I think it's 100% uh, situation that they're not going to be cut. So the Dow, the DAC, um, and all, well, all the markets, won't they? They'll all be sideways waiting for. Uh, the news on Wednesday. Big day for Wednesday. In the German DAX, uh, this also stuck in a sideways range. We're still sort of in that sell in May go away scenario. The market sideways there. You can see overnight it's bounced a bit off the uh, the low of Friday when the news was announced. Let's have a look at the 30 minute chart of the DAX. And uh, you can see there we're already moving down to begin with and then prices have moved up and then we've got a gap down there. I don't know whether it's anything to do with uh, Macron announcing uh, an election or not. So I think it was only a couple of years ago he was re-elected. So I don't know what's going on here with all of these uh, situations. There. Are they trying to get out before it hits the fan? Or hopefully not get re-elected while they're calling these uh, elections. Um, who knows? It's all very strange at the moment. But market uh, sideways overnight uh, for the German DAX there. In the S&P 500, well, it's unbelievable, isn't it? But it actually made a new all-time high during uh, uh, Friday's uh, session there. Let's just remove this and put the new one in. Uh, we've got uh, 5375.6. So despite everything falling apart uh, around the seams, the German, sorry, the S&P 500 made a new all-time high. There's the reaction to the non-farm payrolls. The market then moved to the upside and then prices are now sideways, as you can see, just sitting on the DP. So a bit of support for the S&P 500. This is the broader market. This is the one really you should look at. Um, given the backdrop of everything that's going on, it's incredible that the market's at all-time highs, but then there is a disconnect between economic news now and the markets unless they wish to use it to further the 
rise in the stock markets there. In the FT100, the market is back to the 50 EMA. Last time it got down to this level, it bounced off it. Whether it will or not today, who it remains to be seen, but uh, price is down there sitting quite uh, nicely at those levels, as can be seen there. We're below the lower Friday, though, so that's a bit of a concern as prices could uh, move lower. But just because they're below the low in the pre-market doesn't mean to say they won't rally up. We saw this last week with the German DAX when it all looked doom and gloom. And Friday's reaction, the market down, prices sideways, spike down, up, and then continuing the trend that was already in place. Uh, beforehand there so you can just go straight across there and you can see the continuation just uh, the news there trying to bring the markets back so in the US dollar no surprise uh, to see this on Friday the market uh, moving sharply to the upside with those numbers as there's no chance of a rate cut more chance of a rate increase and uh, you can see overnight as well the, the market has gapped but that's likely to come back and fill this gap so if the US dollar has moved this far to the upside, then that means the metals got slammed and slammed they did. So let's have a look and kick off with uh, silver. So there you can see a massive, massive uh, crushing of the silver price on Friday. Markets bouncing on the overnight there. But if you look at the 30 minute chart, you can see uh, how it was absolutely crushed. It started in uh, the well prior to the the release of the data uh, the shanghai market is closed at the moment it was closed on friday it's closed today and it reopens tomorrow we'll look at that in a bit more detail in just a second but there you can see uh, the price is uh, being crushed it already moved lower as i say in the pre-market with the rumor that china is buying or didn't buy any gold during may that was enough to send the market down and then those numbers uh, were enough to send the us dollar up but overnight at the market bouncing a bit. So uh, let's just go to here. So the last reported price for Shanghai is $35 an ounce. Of course, they were closed during Friday. They're closed again today. But a big difference between that and uh, what we're seeing at the moment uh, down at 29.50. Uh, It'll be interesting also to see that uh, when China comes back tomorrow, uh, these bargain prices, they'll be uh, no doubt uh, buying the market. So you could expect to see the lows retested again today as the market treads water, knowing that uh, Shanghai is closed. So the shenanigans can continue and uh, move the prices lower there. It's the same for gold as well. Absolutely crushed just uh, during Friday, down to the 89% retracement, but finding a bit of support overnight. They've got to do this. It's par for the course. It's been like this for years. Uh, it's insane to think that uh, that silver is still only uh, thirty dollars, or well, even that now, when its all-time high was uh, fifty. There's nothing else in the world that is uh, actually, uh, you know, forty, fifty years on that is actually uh, less in price or forty percent less than it was uh, all that time ago. It just never ceases to amaze me, and yet uh, they're allowed to uh, slam the price and keep the price uh, uh, subdued as it is. And gold, obviously, as the central bankers are still buying it, it helps to also crush the price so they can buy that uh, cheaper as well by using the paper market in order to do so. Right, let's have a quick look at the gold-silver ratio. And uh, you can see on Friday, as I mentioned, you know, they could do a straight reversal. And sure enough, they did. Uh, down on the overnight, as silver is uh, moving a bit better than gold as it tries to recover. But then look how much it was slammed during Friday. So no surprise there to see this. Right, let's have a look at the action in the German DAX for Friday before we finish and uh, a look at what's happening overnight. So Friday's session was uh, fairly quiet until we got to the news. You can see prices moving higher and then they got stuck into a sideways range, but then did move uh, down below the low, uh, but tried to come back like it, the magnet that the low is, but uh, losing its power there and trading down to the S1 as we head into the mid-morning and then the Dow Electronic session coming in as well. Weakness all around. The metal's already starting to be pressured to the downside on uh, rumours that uh, China had uh, stopped buying uh, gold during May. And uh, then you can see the market just uh, sideways to lower down to the S2. So a lot of weakness around ahead of these numbers to begin with. I wonder if the market actually knew this. There's the announcement uh, market to uh, springing down and then bouncing back up and 
then uh, really not a lot happening after this because obviously they didn't the market didn't know what to make of it we had a potential sell signal but they said no we're going to bring the market back that uh, took care of that the market then moved higher following the dow but eventually prices uh, trade back up to the low and then start to make their way down as well as the dow gave up uh, the gains and uh, the s p and all of the other markets as well so back down following uh, after hitting the low so the low becoming a resistance there during friday let's have a quick look overnight uh, and see where we are in relation to the lower friday uh, you can see there that uh, we bounced off sufficiently overnight so that the low is down a bit further and also we're not too far off the dp so the market sideways finding support uh, at this brn which is going to be eighteen thousand five hundred. So a bit of support coming in there. You can see where it's uh, touched this uh, a few times. I've found support. So if it breaks this, then there's a good chance of going down towards the low. Otherwise, uh, prices should uh, should hold at uh, this uh, level. Right, that's it uh, for this one. No economic news today. Market's going to obviously have a look and see what uh, and absorb what came out on Friday. And uh, like I say. It'll certainly be interesting to see what happens this week with both the CPI and the FOMC meeting minutes on Wednesday. And with that, uh, have a great day. And as ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.